Number one asks us to solve um, this equation here for x. So you can think of this as a proportion here, like this x minus 1 is over 1. So then you can think of cross multiplying, which is really just multiplying both sides by x plus 2. So we're going to have this x minus 1 times x plus 2, and that's going to equal x squared minus 4x plus 3. So if you want to think of that as multiplying by x plus 2 to both sides, you certainly can, um, because then these will just cancel out. So then you'll see that we get this. Um, the other way is thinking about this as cross multiplication. So just multiplying this up times this and multiplying the 1 up here. Either way will get you to this. So then we need to expand um, this by multiplying it out. So x minus 1 times x plus 2. And so I'll do x times x. I'm going to distribute the x in. So x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. And then negative 1 times x is negative 1x. And then negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So this is going to be x squared plus 1x minus 2 when we combine these terms. And that's going to equal our right side of x squared minus 4x plus 3. So now we see that both sides have an x squared. So if I subtract x squared from both sides, it will cancel. That'll be 0 and this will be 0. So now we're down to a linear equation of 1x minus 2 equals negative 4x plus 3. So I'm just going to add um, 4x to both sides here to get my x's together. So that's going to be 5x minus 2 equals 3. So then we can add 2 to both sides. So we'll end up with 5x equals 5, divide both sides by 5, and we'll get x equals 1. Then anytime your original equation starts with division, you just want to make sure that your solution that you got, which was x equals 1 in this case, doesn't make the denominator 0. And 1 plus 2 is fine, so this is a good solution. So x equals 1 is our answer here. Number two, solve this equation for x. Um, and so again, you can think of cross multiplication here. Okay, um, What you're doing is multiplying both sides by these denominators. Um, so when we multiply by 4 plus x to this side and to this side, it'll cancel out over here. So we're just going to end up with 4 times 4 plus x on this side. And then when we multiply both sides by 4 minus x, it'll cancel here, and we'll still have to multiply it here. So we'll end up with 5 times 4 minus x. So then you just want to um, distribute this. So 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times x is plus 4x. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times negative x is negative 5x. So then I'll add 5x to both sides to get my x's together. So we've got 16 plus 9x equals 20. So we want to get the 16 with the 20. So we'll subtract 16 from both sides. So that this is 0. So we just have 9x equals 4. Then divide by 9 to both sides. And we get x equals 4 ninths. Number three, show that this equation here is equivalent to this one for all x values not equal to 0 or negative 50. Now, it's not equal to 0 or negative 50 because that would make this denominator 0. So these are going to be bad values, so they're just clarifying that. And then explain each step as you rewrite the original equation. All right, so here's our original equation. Um, and we just want to manipulate this using valid mathematical rules. Um, to try and make it look like the other one. So first thing we can do is multiply by all of the denominators. Okay, so we'll multiply by all these numbers, which really is just going to be like cross multiplication. Okay, so we're going to multiply this up. So we'll get x times x plus 50 
times one, so just that. And then equals, we'll multiply this 60 up to this side. So we'll have 60 times 2x plus 50. And if you want to explain this, you could just say cross multiplication. Um, then we're going to expand all of this by distributing. So next thing we're going to do is distribute. So we'll get x times x is x squared. x times 50 is 50x. 60 times 2x is 120x. 60 times 50 is um, 3 thousand and then this was just distributing then we're going to bring um, our like terms over so we're going to subtract 120x from both sides and that's going to give us um, x squared minus 70x equals 3000 and then we're going to subtract 3,000 from both sides. And so there is not a like term with the 3,000 over here. So we're just going to get x squared minus 70x minus 3,000. And then 3,000 minus 3,000 is 0. So both of these steps was um, doing the subtraction property. where we subtract something, um, the same thing from both sides. So then we can see that the original equation is equivalent to x squared minus 70x minus 3,000 equals 0. Number four, Kieran jogs at a speed of 6 miles per hour when there are no hills. He plans, so here's his original speed. He plans to jog up a mountain road, which will cause his speed to decrease by r miles per hour. So his speed is going to decrease when he's running uphill. Um, which expression represents the time t in hours that it will take him to jog eight miles? So... For this, we're going to need um, the formula distance equals rate times time. And then I'm just going to solve this for t since all of these are solved for t already. So I'll just divide by r to both sides. And then that'll cancel out here. So t is just equal to the distance divided by the rate. So we're going to plug in um, the distance he's traveling is 8 miles. Okay, so he's going to go 8 miles. And now his rate... Okay, his original rate was 6, so now his new rate is going to be 6, but minus r, because he's decreasing by r miles per hour by running uphill. So he's traveling 8 miles, and then his steady speed with no hills is decreasing by r miles per hour. So then we'll just look for this one, and that is letter D. Number five, this rational function can be rewritten in this form where C and R are constants. Which expression is the result? So we're just dividing by X here. So we can just divide these pieces. There isn't like a binomial down here, so we don't have to do long division. So we can just take G of X and take the first term X divided by the bottom plus the second term 10 divided by the bottom. And then this x over x will simplify to 1. And then we have plus 10 over x. So then look for that one. So 1 plus 10 over x is b. Number 6, for each equation below, find the values of x that make it true. So we're going to cross multiply here. So we'll multiply this up. So we'll do 10 times 7 plus x is equal to that 1 plus 7x. And if it makes you feel better to make this a proportion and think about multiplying the 1 up, you certainly can. Then we're going to distribute this 10 in. So this will be 70 plus 10x equals 1 plus 7x. So now we need to get our x's on one side and our constants on the other. So I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides. So this will be 70 plus 
3x equals 1. So now I'll subtract 70 from both sides and get 3x equals negative 69. Divide by 3 and we'll get x equals um, negative 23 for this one. And then just make sure it doesn't make this denominator 0, which it doesn't because negative 7 makes it 0. And then we'll just repeat this process three more times. So we're going to multiply this denominator up. So we'll have 0.2 times 12 plus x equals 6 plus 2x. So we'll distribute this 0.2 in. So then we're going to get 0.2 times 12, which is 2.4 plus 0.2x equals 6 plus 2x. So now we need to get our x's together. Um, so you can subtract 0.2x from both sides. So then we're left with the 2.4. This will be 0, so 2.4 equals 6 plus 1.8x. So now we'll subtract 6 from both sides which is going to give us negative 3.6, and this will be 0 plus 1.8x, divide by 1.8, and we'll get x equals negative 2. Again, look and see if it makes the denominator 0, which it doesn't, so that's a good solution. Part C We'll multiply this up, so we have 0 0.8 times 0 0.5 plus x equals the other side of x. So we'll do 0 0.8 times 0 0.5, which is 0 0.4, and then 0 0.8 times x, which is just 0 0.8x, equals x. So I want to get those x terms together, so we'll subtract 0.8x from both sides. So we have 0 0.4, this is 0. And then this is 1 minus 0 0.8, so that's 0.2x. So then we'll divide by 0.2, and we'll get that x equals 2. This does not make the denominator 0, so we're good. And then the last one, so multiply this up again. So we'll have 3.5 times 0 0.5 minus x equals this side of 4 plus 2x. So then um, 3.5 times 0.5 is 1.75. 3.5 times negative x is negative 3.5x. And then equals 4 plus 2x. So we want to get our x's together. So I'm going to add 3.5x to both sides. So this is 0, so we have 1.75 equals 4 plus 5.5x. So then I'll subtract 4 from both sides, and this will be negative 2.25 equals 5.5x. So divide by 5.5. And we'll get x, and this is a decimal, so we'll round it um, to negative 0 0.41 for x. Again, check that in the denominator. Okay, that's fine. It does not make the denominator 0. Number 7, a softball player has um, had 8 base hits out of 25 at bats for a current batting average of 8 over 25, which is 0.320. So how many consecutive base hits does she need if she wants to raise her batting average to 400? So there's a couple ways you could do this. Since this is pretty close to 400 and we don't have very many at-bats, you could just keep adding one hit and one at-bat. So you could do 9 over 26 and see what that is. Then you could have two hits um, and two more at-bats. You could do 10 out of 27. 11 out of 28 and keep going with that until you find one that pushes this over 400. So that's one way to do it. Um, if this were like a longer problem, okay, where it would take more at bats, like if this is in the, you know, 400s or something, um, then you might want to do algebra for it. 
So how many hits, okay, and it's consecutive. So the number of hits and the number of at-bats are going to be the same. So we're going to add some number of hits and some number of at-bats, and we want this to equal 0.4 or 0 0.400. So then we can multiply this up, and we'd get 8 plus x equals 0 0.4 times 25 plus x. So then we'd have 8 plus x equals, and then 0.4 times um, 25 is 10, and then plus 0.04x. So we want to get those x's together, so I'm going to subtract 0.4 from both sides. So this is 1 minus 0.4, which is 0.6, and then that would be 0. So then subtract 8, so you get 0.6x equals 2, divide by 0.6, and you would get the number of consecutive hits to be 3.3, but you can't have 3.3 hits. So in order to push this over 400, we need more than 3 hits, okay? So she's going to need 4 consecutive hits to push it over 400. And you can check that out. Um, by actually doing four hits. So three hits would be 11 over 28, and that's going to be um, 0.393, so still under 400. And then if you added four to both, so four more hits and four more at-bats, that'd be 12 out of 29, and that's going to give her a batting average of 0.414, so four hits.